sure about the address, miss? Yes, this is the place. You'll be sure and wait for me now, won't you? Sure, I'll wait. Number, please. Oh, I'm at 122 Old Mill Road. This house hasn't been occupied for 13 years, and yet there's a telephone in it. Can you tell me who had it installed? I wouldn't have that information, madam. I could connect you with a night nice supervisor, but she'd have to wait until the business office opens in the morning. I'm sorry. Modern improvements. We might have cleaned the place up a bit. Oh, yes, of course. Dad sat there. I sat next to him. Mr. Barksdale sat next to me. Aunt Lucille. Uncle John. Harold. Mother. Thor. Marjorie. Uncle Dick. Aunt Joan, Uncle Wayne, and
Mr. Barksdale? Mr. Barksdale, is that you? Mr. Barksdale? station, Captain Ryan speaking. Yeah? The old Morgan place? He says he drove a youngster out there about uh, 30 minutes ago. Hold the driver, I'll be right over. Okay. Wake up, you dumb ass of muscle, and get going. Huh? Come on. Oh, where we go? Oh, the... Better than a macro. All right. Give me Stuyvesant nine six hundred. You can go. Leave your address. We'll want you later. Yes. Sir. What? Well, keep ringing them. Hello. Hello, Phil. This is Ryan. Listen, we've got a swell case down here. I'm not interested. Give me Stuyvesant 9600. When you hear the tone of the gong, it will be exactly 12 o'clock and six split seconds. <laughs> This is a good murder. Listen, 13 years ago, a guy invited all his relatives to dinner. The sap deserved to die. Well, arrest the mother-in-law and don't bother me anymore. Oh, all right, but make it snappy. All right, there was 12 people there. The table was set for 13. The 13th guest never got there. That was 13 years ago. And now, tonight, we find a dame murdered, and she's sitting at the table in the 13th chair. Huh? I counted them. She was sitting in the 13th chair. You dumb flat foot. Who told you where to start counting? Well, go back and count the girl's chair first, and let me know how you come out. And give my love to Aunt Sarah. that number again and keep ringing it. And then tell the night supervisor I want to know who had a couple of phones installed at 122 Old Mill Road if you have to get the whole Bell family out of bed. I'm uh, Winston, the private investigator. Captain Ryan sent for me. Yes, sir. Go right in. And uh, have fun, huh? <laughs> Call up headquarters and tell Clarence I'm sending those prints. Yes, sir. Oh, what's the number? Central... 
You dumb idiot, don't you even know that? Get out and look it up. The discipline will do you good. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Winston. We got a swell murder here. Good. And uh, the number you want is Central 5, 5,000. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. 5, 5,000. Central 5, 5,000. <laughs> well, you certainly took your time. I was busy. Yeah, sure. When you hear the gong, the time will be 12 o'clock and six split seconds. Yeah. Have a look at this, and then I'll introduce you to the lady. This house has been unoccupied for 13 years, yet the phone's installed and the electricity turned on. I'm tracing that. Those books are on the floor. That's all in here. Now come on and have a look at the banquet. You get your hold still all right. Same old joke. If I have a day off, I think up a new one. You can have her now, Doc. Just a minute, I want Winston to have a look. Oh, will you take care of that, Jerry, please? Okay. Too bad. Pretty girl. You wouldn't notice that. Seen enough? Yeah. Okay, Doc. Say, how did you know about that dinner party 13 years ago? Oh, every man and his dog knows that story around here. <laughs> Morgan, senior, dropped dead just after they all sat down to the table. The old lady, she was young then, must have been a little bit cracked herself. She wouldn't allow a thing to be touched. Just closed up the house and moved out, and that's that. And all these guys have been waiting for the dinner ever since. Mm. Gives me the willies every time I think of it. Well, don't think then. Do uh, you know who the girl is? Sure. Daughter, Marie Morgan. Had her whole life's history in her handbag, but no address. The driver that brought her out here said he picked her up on the corner of 59th and Park. The apartment house? No, on the corner. We've been checking up on the apartment houses around there now. How was she killed? Hmm. Well, you hear. The doc hasn't said for sure yet, but it looks like she was electrocuted. Electrocuted? Hmm. I thought of that, too. Not a wire on it. That was it. Electricity. Enough to kill her, but not to burn the body. I wonder where she got it. Say, that light in the living room. I'll get it. Well, uh, what about that light in the living room? It ain't on. I tried this globe in every socket in the room and it don't work. Oh, maybe the globe's burned out. Never thought of that. <laughs> Anyway, I don't think I'd go around trying light sockets if I were you. Why? Didn't it occur to you that a young lady was electrocuted here tonight and that she might have been trying light sockets? Hello, operator. See if you can trace that call and ring me back. Make it snappy. Yes, darling, there's been a murder. You can read all about it in the morning papers. She listened in on all the other calls. Why the devil didn't she listen in on that one? What was it? I don't know. I just heard the receiver going up after I answered. Hello, Captain Ryan speaking. Sound Hotel? Thank you, sister. Oh, Grump! Yes, sir. 
Beat it over to the Sound Hotel and see if you can trace that call. Get a list of all the guests and all the telephone calls after midnight. And don't muff it. No, sir. And don't go to sleep. Yes, sir. Oh, well, how am I going to get there? You can drive a car, can't you, sweetheart? Take mine and beat it. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, if that guy's uncle don't die soon, I'll be a nervous wreck. Who's the uncle? Just the big boss in the city, that's all. Oh, so that's why he's on the force. You don't suppose because he got any brains? <laughs> hey, Cap, come here. Come here, over here. Oh. Come here, Cap. What's the matter now? The car, look at it. It ain't there. Well, I'll be a son of a... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. I just think it's funny. <laughs> I'm glad you invited me down. <laughs> yeah. Come in, boys. Yeah. Okay. Sit down. I'll see you in a few minutes. Do they identify the body? Yes, sir. Which one of you is the brother? I am. A friend of yours? Yes. And of my sister. All right, boys, I won't keep you long. Either of you know a man named Barksdale? Yes, we both do. He was my father's lawyer. Is he still handling the estate? Yes. Why? We'll ask the questions if you don't mind, son. Wasn't your father's will a little unusual? It was quite unusual. He provided for my mother, for Marie and me, and left the bulk of the estate to the 13th guest. Who was that? We don't know. The 13th guest never arrived. Screw eek. Anything else about this guest? No. Except that we always supposed that he'd come forward or be named when we became of age. Well, when'll that be? Well, why, do you suppose that might have had something to do with it? Marie was 21 yesterday. What? Yes. Boxdale called her the other day and told her to... Oh, I'm not interested in that. Well, I am. All right, be interested. Wait a minute, where are you going? Out. I'll see you later. Say, but... Uh... Oh. I suppose you were at that dinner party your father gave? Yes. Where'd your sister sit that night? Why? And beside my father. She always sat there. Which side? Uh, on his right. Will you draw me a diagram of that table, name the people in the seating arrangement, and uh, if any of them have died since, make a note of it. Have you kept in touch with the family? When we couldn't avoid it. <laughs> well, uh, put down their addresses and leave it with the captain here. Thanks. Do you remember how we sat that night? Yes, I, I think so. Were you there? Well, I, I was visiting there. Uh, we were just kids then. But it isn't easy to forget a thing like that dinner party. I suppose not. I've got a hunch I'll be thinking about it for some time myself. Let us hear about that phone call from Barksdale, and I'll let you go. Well, there, there isn't much to it, except that Barksdale called her a few days ago and gave her some instructions. Something she was supposed to do on her 21st birthday. And you don't remember what they were? I know. She wouldn't tell me. And we're supposed to find the answer. Does anybody know anything? What's the matter with the old man besides being nuts? Are you sure this dinner wasn't held in an insane asylum? What? Try and calm down. Take these boys to the next office and give them some paper and pencils. And send Carter in. Yes, sir. You boys better stick around. We might want you. It's too bad, son. Take care of yourself. And what do you mean? Hmm, nothing much. You mean they might go after me? They might. Well, I don't think I'd care if they did. Well, we would. It cost the department a lot of dough to investigate a murder. Well, in that case, I'll be careful. Well, thanks. You've been very considerate today. That's all right, son. Well, what do you think? I can't think. I'm numb. Why the devil does a man have to go through all that hocus-pocus just to leave a will? It burns me up. Well, stop burning. Carter will make you happy. Yeah. Hey, Carter. 
Let's see what you got. Yes, sir. Here are the deposit slips of the telephones and lights, ordered by one John Barksdale. Barksdale? So that's where you got it, huh? Yeah, feel better now? I'll say. Wait till I lay my hands on this guy. Also a man answering to Barksdale description, registered at the Sound Hotel last night about 9.30, under the name of Perry, and at 1.22 put in a call to Douglas and 968, then checked out of his hotel immediately after. Now, he hasn't been home since, and he hasn't shown up at his office yet, and his folks are beginning to worry. Well, now, isn't that too bad? Tell them they can see him on uh, Visitor's Day. Let's go. Oh, pardon me, sir. I managed to dig this up out of the Daily Herald files. It's Bartlesdale. Swell. Let's send that out at once. Okay. Put a couple of the boys on those two kids in there. They may be all right, and again, they may not. Yes, sir. Anything else for me, sir? No, but stick around. Okay. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Stand by for description of one John Boxdale. Wanted for questioning on the Morgan murder case. Last seen on Long Island driving a packet touring, license unknown. Description, 50 years, six feet, gray hair, eyes brown. That is all. Hello? Hello? I shall bring you wrong. Hello? I don't care. Mr. Wilson, if you'd have heard it, well, you'd have... Uh, what did it sound like, Grump? Well, it sounded like Tarzan. Tarzan. And the devil and a couple of hyenas throwed in. Well, uh, could you give me an idea of uh, what it sounded like? Well, yeah, it, it, it started kind of... It started kind of up, like... Yeah! Yeah, 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 Get out.
Sir, I know who put all them books there. So would I. Did you go to sleep today? I don't think so. You don't think so? Get out of my sight before I kill you. Yeah. Hey, Phil, come here. You come here. Where are you? In the dining room. Oh. It's Barksdale. Can you beat that? Search the house upstairs and down. Yes, sir. Not that it'll do much good. Phil, what's the answer? It's got me worried plenty. Me too. But I'm beginning to be glad that I wasn't invited to that dinner party years ago. Yeah. Here's the diagram young Morgan drew today. Take a look at the seating arrangement. First, we find the girl's body in the chair that she sat in that night. And now this. Are you beginning to get the idea? Gee, yes. Ye gods, Phil. Are they going to line this table with stiffs? That's the way it looks, unless we do something. But, but that's crazy. It very nearly confirms one thing, though. The person doing it was at the table that night. I'll get it, boss. You get out of the morgue. I haven't been in any morgue. Take your hands off me. Shh, be nice. I won't. Let me alone. Do you want me to spank you? Hold still. That's a good little girl. What's your name? Ree Morgan? Yes. What did you say? I asked this child here if she were Marie Morgan. I know child. Will you shut up? And she said yes. And she said yes. I don't know. Maybe it's something I ate and this is the nightmare. Where did you pick her up? I found her riding around in your car. In my... I was on my way to the police station. Yes, and baby, you're still on your way to the police station. Take her down and lock her up. I've got some things I want to ask her about. You can't arrest me. Oh, can't I? That's what they all say. Maybe it's all a mistake. And maybe you can explain everything. And I'll bet you won't say a word until you see your lawyer. Well, I won't. All right, baby. Come and see your lawyer. Self to a good look. That's right. Do you know anything about it? No. No, of course not. What can this mean? That's what we're going to find out. Take her and lock her in the library until we get through here. Was she headed for police station? She was going in that direction. Call up city headquarters and report this. Call the coroner. Then stick around outside. Yes, sir. Now, why did you ask that girl if she was Marie Morgan? I think she is. What about the other dame? There are no twins. No, but the other girl had several small scars around her face. Didn't you notice them? 
Yes, but I didn't think anything about it. Well, I did. I thought she'd had her face lifted. Well, what a blasted idiot I've been. That's why you were so surprised when her brother told you she was 21. Certainly. No kid that age is going to have her face lifted. And you beat it back to the morgue to have another look. Right. And took a good plastic surgeon with me. She hadn't had her face lifted. She'd had it completely made over. Well, I'll be... Now, that commences to make sense. Barksdale made an appointment with the real Marie Morgan to meet him here. They planned to kill her and substitute the other girl, huh? Who planned to kill her? Huh? Barksdale made the appointment? Yes, but if Barksdale was in on it, which he may have been, uh, who killed the gentleman on your right? Little Bo Peep. I wouldn't do that if I were you. The police might not like it. I was only trying to call my brother. We'll call him later. You're going to take a ride with me. Where to? To my apartment. She'd be safer in jail. Don't worry, she won't get away. I didn't mean that. I said she'd be safer in jail. And you may go to the devil. Mr. Adams, Mr. Whitson. Why, my dear child. Why, I'm almost afraid to touch you. What is the meaning of all this? Why, I'll have to send back that cutaway I ordered for your funeral. You wear those to weddings, not funerals. This is Uncle Adams, the worst old reprobate who ever lived. My dear, you're covering quite a lot of territory. How do you do, Mr. Winston? I'm delighted. How do you do? If you give him a drink, I think he may keep still. Uh, what'll it be, scotch and soda? Splendid, thanks. Easy on the soda. <laughs> If you want my opinion, it's Uncle Adams who's been committing all the murders. All the murders? Mr. Boxdale was murdered today in the old house. Boxdale? My word. Not that I ever liked the old devil, you understand, but... but murdered. Well, what's the meaning of it, Mr. Winston? You're investigating the case, I suppose? Unofficially. I'm a friend of Captain Ryan. Yes, yes, of course. I've heard of you. Well, have you any... Uh, clues, don't you call them? Any uh, ideas? No. But he has a laugh for you. Really? Well, let's have it. You're next. What? According to Mr. Winston's theory, you're next on the list. Unless, of course, you've been doing the murders yourself. Really, Marie, you've always had the most peculiar sense of humor. Must be some more of the family. I'm doing the resurrection act. And enjoying it thoroughly, if I know you. You certainly startled me. Did I? Mr. and Mrs. Thornton, Mr. Winston and Miss Thornton. How do you do? How do you do? If you would explain your reasons. Well, for oh. heaven's sake. I thought you were dead. Disappointed? Well, why be a hypocrite? You know I've always hated your Marjorie. If you say that word again, I'll disown you. What a loss. Is this for private use only? I suppose you're Winston. At your service. I may take you up on that. Mm hmm? Mm hmm. If this is another one of your jokes, Marie, I must say it's in bad taste. 
I've been simply prostrated all day. I'll bet you have. Bridge always tires mother. Marjorie. May I answer it? Certainly. Let me. Certainly. Bud! Oh. Oh, Marie! It is you! Oh, my dear. They tried to kill me. Are you glad I'm alive? Am I glad? I think you are. But, but what does it mean, sis? They, they made us go down and look at that, that other girl. We thought it was you. Did you cry? Hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, honey, we, we both went home and got potted. <laughs> That's just as good. Come on in. Mr. Winston has the whole family here. He says one of them is the murderer. I'm getting odds on Uncle Adams. Uncle Adams? <laughs> He's too lazy to commit a murder. But tell me, darling, what happened to you? I'll tell you later. Well, here we are. Just one big, happy family. Oh, hello, Thor. Who was that blonde I saw you with the other night? There was no blonde and you know it. Oh, well. Dear Marjorie, your soul must look like the inside of a vinegar bottle. By Jove, it's a good idea. I wish I had thought of it myself. What's that? Killing off the family. It must be some poor soul that had the misfortune to dine with us when we were all together. I think you're right. Someone who dined with you 13 years ago. Really? Oh, you mean the night that John read that stupid will? And then died. Well, Mercy, don't ogle me. I didn't kill him. No one killed him, as far as we know. Does anyone here know the present whereabouts of uh, Wayne Seymour? The last time I saw him, I got an impression that he was going to spend the rest of his days at number nine, Yokohama. <laughs> <laughs> I see you know your Yokohama, Mr. Winston. Uh, I've traveled a bit. With the exception of Wayne Seymour, you people were the only guests at that dinner who are still alive. Well, and we're dead from the neck up. Speak for yourself, John. I'll speak if you don't mind. Go ahead, but a few snappy jokes injected here and there would make a world of difference. You see, we're accustomed to public speaking. I'm afraid this isn't a joking matter. It looks as if someone is determined to kill every person who attended that dinner 13 years ago. They've already killed two people. Two? Two? two. two. Yes. A girl mistaken for Miss Morgan and John Barksdale. Mr. Oh. What? Barksdale. Barksdale murdered? Very much so. And in both cases, the bodies were found in the chairs occupied by that person at the dinner. And as uh, Captain Ryan so elegantly describes it, the murderer intends to line the table with stiffs. Oh, how vulgar. Well, thank goodness I was under the table most of the time. <laughs> yes, pinching me. Oh, I was a cute youngster, always full of fun. Well, someday I'll look at your baby pictures, but uh, just now we're discussing murder. Which automatically makes one think of the Marjorie. Mm. Speak for yourself, John. Shall we go on with this or just turn it into a family reunion? Well, why not have a blindfold test? Wouldn't matter which one you picked. We'd all cut each other's throats for a dime. Hmm. Why a dime? I'd cut yours for fun. Give me police headquarters. Detective Bureau, Captain Brown's office. Well, it isn't every day you get a chance to see a mastermind at work. Hello. Who's this speaking? Oh. Well, this is Winston. Uh, send the wagon to my apartment. And issue... Uh, um, four John Doe and three Jane Doe warrants. Material witnesses in the Morgan case. Right. I've got them here. <laughs> um, really, you're quite amusing, Mr. Winston. Thank you. You like the matron in the city jail, too. She's one of the Philadelphia Smiths. Perhaps by this time you're beginning to see that I mean business. Now then, do you want to stop trying to be clever or do you want to spend the night in jail? Well, women, do the men have separate wards from the women? I think you settled it then, young lady. 
Night in jail may make you people see that murder isn't amusing. This is an outrage. So is murder. Why, you can't do this. Wait and see. I'll break you for this. The governor is a personal friend of mine. And of mine. And I happen to know that he's a little funny when it comes to murder. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Don't be a lot of fools. He doesn't intend to send us. The police. Yes, yes, so I see. Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, sir. Have you the warrants? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, all signed and in order. All right. Take these people down and lock them up. Yes, sir. All right, step lively. I demand to see my lawyer. Miss Morgan saw her lawyer today, and I don't think she enjoyed it. Well, you'll be sorry for this. Good night, Winnie, dear. Mr. Winston. Uh, good night, my dear, and uh, sweet dreams. down, dearie. We've got another corpse. <laughs> what? What? What, the family's all locked up? Yeah, sure. You're a smart guy. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't over yet. You coming down? Okay. Get me the police station. Oh. Give me the desk sergeant, the city jail. Yeah. Hello. This is Winston, private investigator on the Morgan case. I sent down seven of the upper crust for you. Will you send somebody in and see if they're all there? Yes, sir. Hey, Mike, take a look at the 400 and see if they're all there. Okay, sergeant. I won't stay in here another moment. <laughs> Say, what are you trying to do, rip me? Dear me, no. Say, if you guys don't dummy up, there's going to be a murder. Well, that's what we're here for. Two murders. He did them. What? Hey, pipe down here. Yeah, officer, I demand it. Oh, go read your ticker. I want to know what Steele's doing. Sergeant. Okay. All there, Mr. Winston. Okay, thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, turn them all loose, but put a man on each one of them. Now, I'll be responsible. place at all. I've scoured the whole house. Now the only answer is there must be a closet or a room somewhere. 
that we don't know anything about. I don't want to know anything about it. All right, Bill. Make it snappy. Uh, cut it right there. What do you make of that, huh? I wonder. Steel. Great guns. Nothing rubber about that. Come on, let's get out of here. I've seen sights, but that one. Oh. Rather a neat way of doing it, though, huh? I don't think it's neat. It's fiendish as the devil. Do you realize that the murderer left that switch on not caring who got killed? While he's asleep in the county jail, he commits another murder. But he wasn't here to turn off the switch and bring the body in here. I think that cinches it. But which one? Well, you saw them. Which is the most likely? Well, the odds are about even. There's a cousin Marjorie who'd commit murder just for the fun of it. And her mother'd kill anything that stood in her way. But I think it stands between the two uncles. Adams is as smooth an old devil as I've ever seen. But Thornton's deep. You know, the big businessman who'd stop at nothing. What about the brother and his boyfriend? Well, I think they're all right. Jensen's in love with the girl, and her brother seems genuinely fond of her. Well, what's the girl's story? Well, she says someone shot at her in the dark. She ran upstairs and hid. And by the way, she heard that same cry that Grump heard. And according to her, it wasn't particularly pleasant. Just the same, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> and what else did she do besides steal my car? Well, she said she came back down, was about to beat it out the front door when she heard a car and motorcycle drive up. Said by that time she didn't know where to turn. And when she came in here and saw her double sitting cold and stiff at the table, she did go nuts. Got scared of the police as well as the rest. Hid in the cellar and then stole the car. She hid out all the next day. Thought better of it and was on her way to the station when they picked her up. Logical. Barksdale asked her out here? Yes. And what they were all after, I think, was a slip of paper that she got that day at the bank. Which doesn't make much sense, of course, unless it's a safe combination. What was it? Thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> I'd like to get old man Morgan alone for about ten minutes. I'd teach the old buzzard how to write a will. <laughs> well... We get the family down here and try and sweat it out of them? Or should we put a close watch on them and see who comes down here? Well, I'm in favor of the last. Now our friend may get curious and come down to see if he's had another killing. Then we keep this last one quiet, huh? That's right. I've got a hunch it's the missing uncle. But I want to call Miss Morgan. Call the coroner too, will you? I'm kind of ashamed to because I've bothered him so much lately. Thank you. Well, if this is the kind of service I'm going to get, I'm going to get killed every day. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Miss Blink's apartment. Uh, how'd you like our city jail? Listen, child. I want you to destroy that strip of paper at once. And don't tell anyone what was written on it. Not even your brother. But... No one's accusing your brother. Say, listen, don't you get too smart. You know, there's a distinct prejudice in the police department against little girls who go around stealing police cars. Oh, you're not. Well, 21's a mere drop in the bucket. Uh, well, say, will you shut up and let me talk? Now listen, don't tell anyone those numbers. And if anyone tries to get them out of you, let me know immediately. Will you do that? 
like a sweet little girl. That was the great sleuth, Winston. Yeah. Hmm. What did he want? He told me not to tell anybody the numbers on that slip of paper. What numbers? 13, 13, 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Trust a woman. <laughs> oh, well, for goodness sake, don't tell him I told you. <laughs> All right, we won't. <laughs> on you looking at those things. Huh? Why don't you have luncheon with me? It'll be more comfortable than standing out here. How'd you know I was following you? Have you ever been to the zoo? Sure. Did you see the elephants? Yeah. Well, that's how I know. Huh? I'm afraid you're not very bright. But you may come in handy. I'm about to go calling. Would you like to come along? I gotta go wherever you go. Is that a theme song or just your quaint way of saying things? Oh, well, I... You'd better ride with me. You know, I'm getting a pain in the neck from looking back at you. Come on. Of course, just looking at you may give me a pain in the neck. Huh. Get in. Okay, stay there until you relieve. That was Bentley, detailed to watch Adams. He says Adams hasn't left the house all day. But some dame just came up in a limousine with Grump. Grump? He's tailing the Thornton girl. Tailing her? He's riding in the limousine with her. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd give a hundred bucks to see that. <laughs> Come in. <clears throat> There's a Dr. Sherwood outside. Says he has some information on the Morgan case. Dr. Sherwood? Yes, sir. Send him in. I hope he's our man. Uh -huh. Hi, Doctor. Captain Brown? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I hope you're a plastic surgeon. I see you're ahead of me. I am, as a matter of fact. And I operated on the young lady who was killed. I only saw your notice in the paper this morning. Yeah, well, we didn't know until last night that the wrong girl had been killed. Uh, when did you operate on her? Several months ago. Three, as a matter of fact. She and her brother came to... What? Well, she said he was her brother. What name did they give? Morgan. Morgan? Uh, May I take Dr. Sherwood over to Miss Morgan's apartment? Okay. You could identify the brother, couldn't you? Oh, certainly. He came to me twice. Fine. Let's go. Well, goodbye, Captain Brown. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you. Thank you. Oh, hello. Tell me, Doctor. That's your man? No. Say, why aren't you down at the old house? Well, I'm rather tired of being there so much. Have you a picture of your friend Jensen around? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. But look here, Mr. Winston. Marie's gone down to the old house to meet you. What? Well, didn't you call her? Well, no. You didn't call her? No, I tell you. What's it all about? I just got in. She left this. Where's it? Oh, honey. Oh, uh, get a picture of Jensen and show it to the doctor, will you please? Hello, operator. Get me Douglas in 968. Hurry it.
That's the one. Hmm. Hurry with that call. Now listen, child, don't get in a panic, but get out of the house as quick as you can. Is there an officer guarding it? Yes. He let me in when I told him you... Mr. Winston, didn't you call me? Now, now, don't get in a panic. Just get the officer to drive you to the Douglasson police station and wait for me there. Now beat it. Miss Morgan. Hasn't she been here? No. No one's been here. You come with me. I may need you. No, wait. Stay here. Tell Ryan to beat it over to the Morgan house as soon as he gets here. Yes, sir. Isn't she there? No. done with Miss Morgan. Come on now, make it snappy. Miss Morgan? I don't know. Where is she? What's this? Uh, just a swell species of skunk. Now come on, tell me, what have you done with her? I tell you, I... Did you call her and tell her to meet me here? No, I swear I didn't. We know all about Sherwood and the other girls, so you may as well tell us the rest. Who was in on this with you? Barksdale. So you killed her and then Barksdale so you wouldn't have to split, huh? No, I don't know who killed him. I swear it. Pick up that phone. No, no. Why not? Because that's the way Leela got it. You were there that night. Did you kill her? No, I saw her after, after shooting at Miss Morgan. No, no, I didn't. Uh, now I didn't. you're a liar. Go on, take him down and lock him up. But, Phil, I tell you, Ryan, it doesn't make good sense. 
Why go to all the trouble to impersonate someone and then kill the impersonator? Jensen tried to kill Miss Morgan, but somebody else killed the girl thinking it was Miss Morgan. Jensen knew the difference. There have been two different factions working in this against each other. Why not? But where's... Exactly. Uh, get an axe. Break that wall in. All right. And son, you'd better go on back to the station. Why? Because I don't think your sister's going to be alive when we find her. I don't know. Help me. No. You know what they are. Help me. Help me. I know, but if you kill me, you'll never know. You little fool. Don't you know that I'll kill you anyway? Got a patent on that little electrical device of yours, Adams? No, I'm sorry to say. I haven't. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. The state's got something that works along the same lines. And we're going to give you an exclusive demonstration. Take him out. Come on, move. Will they let you into that safety deposit box? Sure. What did you find? Only a million dollars of securities for her. A million? How disgusting. I hope it isn't U.S. Steel. Don't worry, it isn't. I left the securities there, of course, but this letter was on top and I thought you'd want it. Thank you. To Marie, the 13th guest. Can you imagine that? I was it all the time. <laughs> I... The poor lamb. Read it. Aloud? Why, yes. My dear child, I'm making a rather melodramatic attempt to protect your fortune. But if I am right about the other members of the family, it is almost certain to reveal them to you in their true light, so that you will not make the same mistake I made when I married into it. Bless you, my dear, and may they have killed each other off by the time you receive this. Your father. It's sad, but it's also darn good advice. What? Uh, not to marry into a screwy family. 
Oh, yeah. Tell me where you've been. Well, first I went... Told me to tailor. Hello. Hello, Phil. This is Ryan. Listen, I've got another swell. I'm not interested. When you hear the tone of the gong, it will be exactly 12 o'clock and six split seconds. <laughs> uh -oh. Hello? Ring Stuyvesant 9600 and keep ringing it. And when you've done that, well, well, ring it some more. <laughs> 